So my client returns today and I'm going to read um, the paragraph she gave me and it says she feels like she's on the right track. Um, it does not feel like it's a disc issue. We recall that she did have a discectomy. Um, she's still sore and sitting. She feels less intense pain and felt a shift in her pelvis with the treatment yesterday and she thinks her pelvis has been stiff for decades. Um, interestingly, when she left yesterday afternoon, she left about three o'clock in the afternoon and they went out and ate and then she went to bed early and she felt sick. Uh, you don't feel sick today? No. Good, good. And today you woke up less, less sore. You woke up sore today, but less intense. Yes. Um, so I'm pleased to note that there is better pelvic mobility. I can glide the pelvis now to the left. I can take up the slack and glide it over. And I can glide it over to the right and okay. spring it as well. I can also get a little bit of posterior motion. I, the slack takes up pretty quickly. Oh. And I can spring it and there's a little give, but it's pretty tight, okay? Um, a lot less spring than is normal. So I'm suggesting that the ilia are both forward and that we need to restore posterior rotation on both sides. So let's look at that with you on your stomach. So we'll look at, at vertical mobility. I can take up the slack and I can spring it. I see her head bob up and down. That's true on this side. Okay. Let me go double check my camera angle. Okay. And now I'm going to test forward rotation of the ilia. So I find the top of the ilia, of the iliac shelf. Take it the slack, oh. and yes, I can spring it forward. She's quite sore with that. But we do have forward motion. Now I'm going to go inferiorly, and here she's really tight. I can't even take it the slack, so I can, and I cannot induce inferior mobility. So this affirms my statement that it seems like both ilia are rotated forward and stuck. Okay, I'm going to come test the sacrum. So here's coccyx here, and I just land on the sacrum, and I can I'm able to take the I'm able to glide it inferiorly. I see her feet move, I see the heels move, and I can spring it inferiorly. So um, sometimes with this pattern, the, the sacrum is stuck in forward bending, and that motion is absent. And sometimes the sacrum doesn't backward bend, but she does. I see movement in her heels. Okay. Uh, I'm just curious to test the sacrotuberous ligament and I'm able to indent that slightly. Yesterday it was really tight. And then I'm going to look at the, at the sacrum in relationship to the PSIS and the, P, the PSIS still overrides. Now the sacrum is anterior, whereas yesterday it was posterior. So there's a positional change in the sacrum and there's certainly a gain in the sacral mobility. Okay. I'll test sacral forward bending and there's a little bit of spring mobility there at the top and now I'm on L5. There's a little bit of spring at L5 and that was absent yesterday. So lay on your back please. So what we're going to do to gain backward motion of your ilium mm -hmm. is I'm going to have you hug your right knee to the outside of your shoulder. So it's at about a 20 degree outward angle. Okay. And just hug that. And I'm going to go three minutes on each side. And this is going to be your homework. I want you to do this once a day forever. Okay. So you're hugging the knee and it's pointing outside of the outside of the right shoulder. Yes. You'll do three minutes on each side, and then I'll come back and we'll demonstrate how this is a how this exercise increases posterior rotation of the ilium. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. I've never had it fail me, um, so I say that with confidence, and I'll stop filming now. 
so 